Welcome. So in this video, I am actually interviewing another late to lesbian couple, Amy and Lisa. This is a couple that I came across who actually live pretty close to me. We've oddly never met in person, but have talked and exchanged uh, messages online, and they agreed to let me interview them. So here we go. Can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> There's like so many steps with Zoom. I know. <laughs> Uh, well, hello. Thank you so much for doing this. And yeah, yeah. good to sort of meet you. <laughs> yeah, good to meet you too, sort of. Yeah, officially. yeah sort of. <laughs> I have a cat here. Hi, hi, Lisa. It's, it's good to meet wife. you. Yeah. yeah, as I know, I've talked to Amy all the time. So yes, good to <laughs> finally meet you. And yeah. Thank you, you for doing this too. little friend there, I see. I do. Yeah, one of there's two in here. They like to come hang out in here with me in my office when I'm doing stuff. So I like to be part of the action. Okay. Yeah. We locked our dog up because she likes to bark when we're on. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. They thankfully, bark, that's fine. They thankfully don't bark, but they do like walk into <laughs> things. <so. laughs> and if not, sometimes then they just bang the door on the outside, like, let me in. So. But uh, yeah, so um, I did a little like intro right before I let you guys in here and just said, you know, you're another late to lesbian couple. We connected on Instagram that you guys actually live like in my area, not far away, but, you know, we actually haven't met in person. Um, yeah, so really just I kind of told Amy beforehand, if you want to share kind of some of your story and then just as that goes, I'll kind of ask questions and yeah, just kind of get to know you. If you guys ever have any questions for me, I'm happy to share too. So sure. Okay. Yeah. So how long, how long have you been doing this podcast? Um, I've had my YouTube channel. So this will go on YouTube. Um, and I've had my channel since I started it shortly after I came out. So probably like 2018. And it started oh as me just starting to share my story because as I was going through this and had just like divorced my husband and everything I was like I can't possibly be the only person in the world going through this like I felt like I was at the time but I was like there has to be other people so I just started sharing how I was feeling what I was going through what the experience was like starting to date and all of that and as I shared more and more women kept come like coming out <laughs> but um <laughs> coming to me and going oh my gosh I'm going through this too like thank you so much for sharing I thought I was so alone um mm -hmm. and so the more I did that the more this has morphed into offering support and guidance for women going through this you know kind of I feel like probably where you guys are I feel like we're out we're at peace we're content like we're good with who we are um, and so as I kind of got to that level, I was like, okay, I feel like I can offer more support and guidance to help other women get through all of those really hard parts. And so the more I can kind of show women, look, there's other people who've done it. It's okay. You know, like you can get to a point where it's good and you're happy and things are peaceful. And, um, cause so many people are so afraid of what this okay. means and yeah. And yeah. What their you know, look like. When but, Amy and I were talking about you. You shared some an overview of the conversation topics. The first one was, you know, how did you guys meet? And mm -hmm. you know, I think we both were coming from a place where many of your first time viewers were mm -hmm. coming from. We were, I I specifically was looking for someone to commiserate with, to, you know, someone who had gone through it or was in the process of going through it, or maybe was in the same position. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I was lucky, if I could find someone in the same position as I was in. Yeah. And that's really what the original source of uh, the desire to, 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 to find someone like me be, began. And yeah. as part of that, I found Amy, who, no. who you know, I, I hit the jackpot because not only, you know, was she the person that I was drawn to just emotionally, spiritually, all of that, but she was in the same position. Mm -hmm. And, and so, that was like my wife. So yeah, I'm married yeah. and my wife was going through that too. And had just like, 
or not just, but had a period of time where she had been divorced from her husband and like was kind of like putting herself back out there. She had been with a woman previously, but yeah. And that's like when we met. So we were both at similar stages and oh. yeah. So it, yeah, it's a great thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking for a friend, you know, <laughs> like yeah. I wasn't out there looking for this. That's for sure. I just wanted somebody to talk to because I felt so lonely, like in this life that I had built and it's like, why am I not happy or fulfilled? Mm -hmm. I have all the things I'm supposed to have. Like, why am I not satisfied? When you were with your husband? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 That's something I hear a lot of women say. Like, I've, I've checked all the boxes and I've done all the things and I've built this it's amazing, yeah. beautiful life. Like, why am I not happy and content? Like, what's wrong yeah. with me? Uh, yeah. Yep. And I have the husband, the house, the kids, yeah. the dog, like the job. Why mm -hmm. am I still unhappy? <laughs> Exactly. Mm -hmm. as, as you know, I think as women going through this as part of our generation, um, that checklist can also be a shackle, right? Yes. Okay. I graduated college, going to yep. go to law school, got to stay focused, graduate law school, mm -hmm. got to get married, got to have the kid, got to get the bigger house, got to have the second kid. So, and that, and yeah. at, you, I, for me, for me personally, after I had my, my second child, um, that's when I took a look around and kept thinking, you know, I have this reoccurring lack of joy, lack of mm -hmm. satisfaction. And, and I felt very guilty about it. I had, I came from a large Italian family. I, I was, my brothers liked to joke. I was the golden child. Mm -hmm. I was, I had done all the things that my parents wanted me to do. And that too, I did all the things my parents wanted me yeah. to do all the things I was supposed to do. I yeah. was supposed to do. And here I, I have the great guy, the beautiful, you know, the kids, the healthy kids that the, the health, I had my health, I had my career. And yet there was always just this gnawing feeling of sorrow of just mm -hmm. this, this, this innate desire that I knew could not be filled. And it was, it, it was difficult. And that's that, that innate desire, that innate hollowness just got bigger and bigger mm -hmm. as years went on. And for some reason, after I had, I had a girl, I had a boy, I had the, you know, the hat, it was just, what, what else is there? Mm -hmm. And it was, did it make a, you like question almost like what's wrong with me? Like, like, am I, I depressed? Am I like, like, is there something, you know? that I, oh, yeah, God. that I need help with it. Yeah. Cause I know a lot oh. of women, like their mental health really struggles oh. with this. Yeah. It really oh. suffers with it. Mm -hmm. exactly. It's like, this is something that I knew about myself, like from a young age, since I was a teenager, it's like, I, I knew this about myself, but it was just never an option. I it never even considered mm -hmm. to me like that this was something I could pursue. It's like, yeah. That's over here, but I still have all this other stuff to do. And you got to check I, all the boxes I, off because that's yeah. what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I yeah. did all, if I did all the things I'm supposed to do, this will go away. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that was not the case. It just got bigger and bigger and bigger with every box that I checked. So yeah. eventually you get to a point where it's like, I can't do this anymore. I've done all the things. Mm -hmm. Like, at what point do I do something that makes me feel happy? That mm -hmm. I think Lisa, did you feel like you knew all along or was this more of like an awakening kind of revelation for you? You know, I, we, we've actually had this conversation before with a lot of our gay friends. Yeah. I think for me, I grew up in a very, I grew up in, in a Sicilian family. So very is, isolated. Yeah. Uh, my father was incredibly strict. I had two older brothers, very strict. And so my experiences in general, were very limited, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, oh, you, you, be careful those boys, you know, oh, I'll be, you know, and it, for me, it was like, okay, I'm going to be a good girl. I'm going to be, yeah. I'm a good girl. And it was very easy to be a good girl. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so for, it worked out. But uh, I think because of that, uh, the limitations I have from an experience standpoint, I didn't, I wasn't really able to experience and socialize in the same way I think Amy was growing up. So it took me longer. I think for me, it was definitely probably the around college. Okay. I started to realize, okay, 
you know, there's, I must, maybe, maybe I'm bi. I mean, oh, that's I what I was just going to ask. Did you go yeah. through a period where you're like, maybe I'm bi? Because, you know, yeah. like, I always, yeah. I was bi, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was bi. Yeah. Or I, I thought, well, I'm not the only one. I'm, you know, you know what Freud says. It's a spectrum. I'm not the mm -hmm. only girl who can see herself with another girl. And mm -hmm. then you know, you start to talk to your friends. Like, no, I don't actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I just like. Well, it's like so. It's like, uh oh. Well, maybe it, it is <laughs> just me, or or maybe I am unique. And and that when I started to flesh that out, that's when it became a bit scarier. Mm -hmm. and, Whenever that scary moment kind of came to a head is when I would run the other way for me. Mm -hmm. Like there's no way I can can be gay. I'm I that's not on my list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the box. It's the wrong box, right? Exactly. So I would go, I would internalize that uh, those feelings that I had and try to go the other way um, and really run towards that treadmill life stage where it's like, okay, I'm next thing I'm find the guy or graduates, you know, whatever, whatever. And just keep checking uh, off the other boxes yeah, and keep yourself busy. And yeah, exactly. Keep running the other way until I got, I couldn't run anymore. Yeah. And yeah. It was, yeah. So you guys were both with men. How long were you married before kind of making this realization and knowing like you had to do something about it? Um, we always joke that she just did everything five years ahead of me. So, <laughs> so True. I was married for seven years. And, and I was married for uh, two, two to 12. Yes, okay. 12 years. Yeah. So that's five. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, so that's, I met Amy, in, we met in 2014. Yes, January and, and I had been married 12 years. Okay. So when you met, were you both still married? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. However, um, we, at that point, from uh, separation was, I think, the best way to categorize the phase we were in. At okay. that, that was the point where I was like, I need someone to talk to. I need a friend that I can talk to that knows what I'm going through. Because I was just like at my limit of, I just didn't know what to do anymore. Had you like told your husbands how you were feeling kind of at that stage or was it something that you were trying to figure out on your own and then you were, then came back with it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I, my husband had always knew this. Okay. Mine did too, so. But I guess not to this level, which honestly, I don't know. I feel like I just kept telling myself, like, just put it away, put it away and you'll be fine. But so I don't know, I guess he knew that I was looking for somebody to talk to, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, <laughs> it was, it was a, a night, uh, we were home for dinner. Uh, kids were put away and we were at that stage in our marriage where the kids were sleeping and our, mm -hmm. all of our Friends were kind of reconnecting with their husbands and spouses and uh, going on vacations. And that, that, that magic or that other friends were having that reconnection, we were not having. So we were having some issues mm -hmm. and we were at dinner and, you know, maybe had an extra glass of wine and pretty much said, you know, my, my, my husband at the time said, so, so what are you saying? You're saying like if Angelina Jolie walked in the door <laughs> that you would, that, you know, and he kind of stumbled. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't realize you were in the room anymore if Angelina Jolie walked in the room. <laughs> so he's like, okay. And so I, that mm -hmm. night I had gone, I, I went to bed and woke up in the morning and really kind of panicked because I thought, oh my God. God, I just Drop, verbalized. Like, like, yeah, yeah. I just verbalized what I have been feeling for you know, but to myself. So I panicked. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was from there, from that point on. You know, we we began to uh, essentially discuss and 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 manage it uh, as best we could, and that was kind of the beginning of the end. Yeah. Did you uh, guys have? fear with that because like, so for what I hear from a lot of women what is 
Um, like I've made this realization, but kind of that panic of, but I've built this life, like all the things that you've checked oh, off the list, but I've built the life. I have the house, we have the kids, we've had a, you know, marriage. And, and so this like, but how can I let this go? How was that kind of yeah. for you guys too? That was one of the biggest fears is like, how do I undo all of this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That I yeah. so carefully spun all of this time. Like, how do I undo it all? Like, we have all of these friends, we have this life, we have, yeah. you know, my parents, your parents, we have kids, we have mm-hmm. family, how do I mean, how do you even start that to process? explain that? And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, Terrifying. Yeah, that was the most difficult part of the yeah. whole process. Yeah, it was the most um, gut wrenching. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was sad it was i mean it was every emotion you can imagine you know you you know you've been through this it's mm-hmm. you have a life you have kids they depend on you for for guidance for the journey forward you have this individual that you you know you committed to that you love mm-hmm. but that's, you know but for this which is a big this <laughs> he, he is your best friend right. and mm-hmm. like, it, it was it's not his fault. Right. I mean, yeah. And then you have all for, for me and Amy, I'm not going to speak for you, but for me, it was also, how do I do this? How do I have a, a family that thinks mm-hmm. I'm this person and I am this person, but <laughs> a little caveat. I, of, yeah. <laughs> I remember I, I, I would run a lot back then and I would run around my neighborhood at the time. And I always thought, I wonder what these people would think if mm. they knew. Yeah. And it was, it was, and I had that, that, that fear, uh, at very, that was very prevalent during that phase when I had told my ex, my husband at the time, and now I needed to, it was one step at a time and it was one truth at a time. And it was, it was the, the scariest part, the absolute scariest part. Cause I thought of, I was, I'm going to lose my family. Mm-hmm. And that, and that was the most, the most gut wrenching part. Yeah. That's what I hear a lot. Everybody is terrified. <clears throat> I mean, even the, the phrase I hear is to blow up my entire life. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I'm yeah. literally like lighting a grenade and like throwing it in there and being like, I'm just blowing it up. And yeah. And you don't yeah. know, like, what do you do after? It's like everything that you want and everything that you're scared of is just like right on the other side of these words that yes. you say. And it's <laughs> like, when you say them, you can't take it back. So yeah. Yeah. It's just, I thought that so many times. It's like everything is just right there. Like if I just say it everything blows up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once, yeah. Once the That's genie the is out of the bottle, <laughs> you can't put the genie back yeah. in the bottle. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh. That, was, that was, that was rough. That, and I, you know, as I look back and, and think about, you know, now where I am, we talk about this all the time. I wish I could go back to that young woman and say, Hey, it's, it's okay. Yeah. This is going to be hard. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not going to be easy, but just breathe. Mm-hmm. One thing, just take it easy. Just remember what you can't control. Don't put it out of your, put it out of your mind. Just yeah. focus on what you can control. And cause it was, it was, it was a, it was a day to day to day hand to hand combat with my heart, with my yeah. head just it was depression it was euphoria yeah. mm-hmm. it was everything mm-hmm. yeah I really don't know of any other experience that would involve probably so many of different emotions you know and, and that's what's so hard like the the guilt and the fear and then sometimes the shame but then mixed with like you said almost this euphoria of like oh my god I'm actually finally taking steps where like I'm gonna get to be who I am but then like but then you feel guilty for feeling happy about that because it's yeah it's mm -hmm. especially with little kids yeah we had we we both had small children my my kids are a little bit older so we have our oldest is is 17 now Okay. okay my Luca is 15, Jack is 14, and, okay. and then our, our youngest is 11. Yep. This was 10 years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, at the yeah. time, 
were one, Liv four, was one, yeah, four, I mean, yeah, five, and seven. seven, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I gotta say, I know one of the one of the things I've often been asked is, would you would you waited? And you know, my my original once I started to figure out, okay, you're probably gay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, let's see, you know, what's the most logical thing to do? Well, I'll just wait until the kids are in college, yeah. Yeah. you know, the, yeah, just, and then, you know, there's this suffocation that came upon me to, to, cause I did the math. I'm like, I don't know how I can do this until yeah. Yeah. they're in college. And so I, the fact that we, the way it happened with the kids ages, I think for us worked out great. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were able to bring them along this journey with us. Yeah. So slowly. slowly. So, yeah. I mean, it, we did it so slowly that like they barely even, you know, I mean, it was just like <laughs> very natural. Yeah. I mean, it was a very painstakingly slow <laughs> journey at times, but it like, just, look, yeah, looking back, it was the right way to do it because, you know, it was like we would just kind of get the kids together every now and then at the pool or, you know, mm -hmm. just like, mm -hmm. oh, maybe we'll have a sleepover this weekend until we were just like moving. Oh, in we're just life. sleeping yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, yeah, I mean, and this was over the course of several years. years. So, yes. wow. Okay. Yeah. So it yeah. was like so gradual that. It was many pool dates for yeah. many years. <laughs> And then, yeah, dinner. Six people and... in one apartment. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was wild. This but... is good to hear, though, because I feel like a lot of, like, I'm very different. My, my process was very, very different. It was, it's actually coming up, it's like a year, mm, six years ago, like this weekend that I always say, like, shit hit the fan. <laughs> because that, it was like St. Patrick's Day. I had gone to Chicago. Um our story was a little different because we had actually opened up our marriage and we were involved with like another couple because in my mind, it was a have your cake and eat it too. My husband mm -hmm. had known about my interest. And so I was like, oh, well, this is great. Like everybody wins. Yeah. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work out that way. And yeah. so things were really rough. There was a we lot of like, her, by the yeah. way, <laughs> we being her. Yeah. Just to make sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it, um, Things were not going well with that situation. Um, so like I had my best friend lived in Chicago and I went to go see her. I was like, I have to get away. It's like, I just have to get away. I have to clear my mind. Yeah. Some other things like happened then that when I got back, I like sat down with my husband. I was like, we have to talk, you know, I was like we have to talk through this. We have to figure this out. And um, he had actually even developed feelings for the woman that was part of the relationship. And so had she. And then and then you know as part of that he was like well you need to figure out how you feel about women and he's like so let's consider us like separated right now as we figure this out and I went on like one actual real date with another lesbian and like sort of had that experience I was like this is it I was like there's no point in continuing on with this I was like that's that's what I want it's what I've been missing I was like if we try to work on this I'm always going to have that and so ours I feel like was fast it was like March, I think April was when I finally like had this like, yeah, we're like, we need to be done. We put our house up on the market. We sold it. We bought new houses. We filed for divorce. Like we were done. Everything was done, moved out, divorced by July. Like so yeah. it that was, part was pretty fast. Was yeah. it? Okay. Like, the, the, the kid, the kid part, melding part was yeah. very gradual. The okay. Family blending was yeah. slow. okay. I got yeah, slow, yeah. But the rest of it no, was, was like a yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. I think we were divorced by the next year. I yeah, I okay. yeah. yeah yeah. I was it was like within eight months or something. Divorce was final. Mm -hmm. Like I had moved out many months before. So yeah, it that part was very fast. I had, okay. I was living with my parents, with my kid, <laughs> which was Do we really to? great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really great. Um, but I think I, we did not have to do that, but you know, it, yeah, yeah. I, uh, the tiny apartment, and then that's where we kind of like started yeah. blending the kids together. Yeah. What when I when I first met Amy, um, 
and you probably had a similar experience and you realize, okay, all this time I've been letting this marinate inside of me. Then when you meet someone and you actually feel the most authentic you've ever felt, mm -hmm. you, feel seen, you feel, you feel like you're feeling, you're finally feeling. Yeah. Um, there's no going back. There, yeah. It was, at that point, it's like, wow, yeah. I don't know how I could go back to quote unquote being straight. Mm -hmm. or yeah. Um, I don't, it, it would be too hard. I think I would probably give myself brain damage if I did it. Mm -hmm. um, it would, yeah. That part was incredibly fast. That's why there was no way we we had that idea, like maybe we'll wait till the kids are in college. And it yeah. was just- And I hear there. people say that and some people do seem to, but I've got, and when it comes to kids, there's honestly no easy time. You know, I've worked with women who have teenagers when they're figuring this out and they're like, I'm terrified to tell my teenager because like they're older and they have their friends and they have their sports and they have their school and I don't know how that's going to affect them. And then it's the same when they have kids that are really young and they're like, but they're so young and I don't want to disrupt their life and, never and, good, and there's never a good time a good, a good time you know I was like it's just making the decision of doing what's right for you and then just working with them and through it as you can so absolutely I, I will say I, now I have a daughter who's about to go to college and I'm thinking about that wow had I waited first of all think about all that time I would have had to suffer yeah. um but she's she, she's going through all those about to go to college feelings. And, and how, I've heard that too. Like they're already how, going through their own yeah, separation. Yeah. And while they're excited, it's a whole new change of life for them. You know, they're yeah. like growing up. And so then, to, yeah, it's like, there's really, it would it, have been, it would have been a lot to put on her. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm glad that I didn't do that. I'm glad we, we you know, it worked out the way it did. Yeah. It would have been a, a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our, all of our kids were young too. My son was, I mean, it was two months before his fifth birthday. He was just starting kindergarten like that August mm -hmm. after things. And my wife's kids were young when she went through it. I mean, her daughter like was just being born. And um, I was like, so for the most part, they don't really even remember at this point, like what it was like, you know, they, this is just sort of the norm they've all kind of grown up with. So how um, old are your kids now? My son's 10, he'll be 11, um, and then her son's nine and her daughter's seven. They're all going to be, over this summer, they all have like summer birthdays. So they'll be eight, 10, and 11, so. Got it. So yeah. you're going to be like us in a few years with all those teenagers under one roof. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Have to, we'll have to do this <laughs> That's over another wine meeting. at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's already a lot of wine, even when they're... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah. one. I was like my one was so easy now that there's three and i mean i'm sure you guys could have like there's multiple yeah. in there yeah we went, yeah oh. we got 50 percent more yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i was yeah, like we're this, not, this we're is not a lot quiet. we're not a quiet family no. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are <laughs> amy's the quietest one of the family yeah. oh yeah yeah uh, <laughs> And she married me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm outgoing, but I like my quiet time. That's the thing. I'm an only child too, and so my son's an only child, and we're both well, only child minus the step sibling, like his siblings now. But we both very much so like our quiet time and our space and to decompress. And yeah, sometimes it's difficult to do that. But yeah, yeah, we have a good mix of kids that like that, and then they're. There are, we have, we, our buddy, our Jackie Jack is he's just, he's kind of, <laughs> he's like me and I'm not his buddy father and that we constantly have yeah, to be what's doing next, something. What's next? Okay. Yeah. Uh, clean the bathrooms in the kitchen. I'm going to go fix the roof now. Her, and not Jack. That, that's yeah, me. He doesn't clean anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, that sounds like a great kid. <laughs> no, no. Jack's like, okay, I played three basketball games and <laughs> now I want to go out with my friends for the whole rest. Oh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> that's funny did she tell you that my wife uh teaches eighth grade at jack school yeah, yeah. You talk about a small world it, it's right. st it's so louis small. it's like yeah uh, everybody is connected the six, uh, connections of lesbians yeah <laughs> yeah. I yeah i know i told her i was like they probably just brought it up like hey i know a lesbian maybe you know this lesbian <laughs> it they, pretty they, much was my wife was like who are you talking about maybe i know them yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
And we did. Yeah. 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 Same thing <laughs> happens with Italian people. Oh, you're Italian. Do you know so and so? I'm like, ah, no. <laughs> We're not so related. Funny. Sorry. <laughs> oh, so funny. Um, okay, so let's see. So overall, I mean, how are your kids with things now? I mean, they were young, so do you feel like it was something that they really realize you know okay now yeah I have two moms and and things like that do you feel like it's made any impact on them or if they've always just been kind of accepting of it or you know um I think it's pretty natural for them um mm -hmm. I think you know each child is their own is a, their own little human being so they're they're all wired differently mm -hmm. I would say that our oldest daughter uh Valentina would probably uh, she, she, she would march in a gay parade with us, right? Mm -hmm. she, she's going to be an advocate. And that's what, sure. a, that's a huge pride, prideful moment. Our, I think our son, Jack would probably be on that same level. Yeah. And then, and then our, the, the youngest and the, and, and Luca, I think they're kind of, it's like, whatever, you know, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not something that, they're going to tout or or shout from the highest mountaintop, but you know it's it's their life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been Liv's life as long as she can remember. Yeah. I mean, she was yeah. one. So it's like no. she she doesn't know. So uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know if she, any either way because it's just always been the way that yeah. it's been. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's great. You know, and that was something I said too. Even for my son, I'm like, I want him to grow up where like things like this are just normal and it's not something he has to like advocate for, or, you know, that it's just, it just is, you know, like in the same way that just like society views, like, Oh, uh, a man and a woman should be together that just to get to the point where it's like, Oh yeah, whatever, you know, love who you love. And, and that's just perfectly fine. You know, like, I think that that's like, it's just a great way to be, but yeah. Yeah. yeah it, they're they're They don't realize how, how lucky they are yeah. that they have and we, we try yeah. to tell them how lucky they are all, every day but <laughs> yeah. uh that they have this unique perspective because yeah they'll go out in the world and maybe they they have a friend who's going through something like this they they can be an ally mm -hmm. exactly yep um so how was it with families let's talk about that too like telling your families and putting this out there because i know that's a really scary part so yeah um I, mine was great it was terrifying to do it but my family was really great they have embraced her they've embraced me her kids every yeah. they've they've just been lovely so mm -hmm. that was very Let me ask, did you help did either of you by chance have like a religious or conservative upbringing my amy or lisa i was gonna say I, you, i'm guessing you probably did from what you said but like Amy, was that your upbringing or was your upbringing always more just, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, it was, it was a lot, it was a lot different. Um, you know, I think uh, my uh, coming out, I think very much was impacted by, by my family and by the expectations that they had of me and the fact that I you know, I, I was raised to uh, want to 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 make my parents happy, mm -hmm. and like most kids, you know, most kids want to do that. Um, yeah. And uh, it was very hard. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that was really hard. It was part of the gut wrenching part I talked about earlier. Um, I had a uh, a really uh, healthy and strong relationship with my father. I was daddy's little girl, and that was really tough because. Um, when I told him, I, I, I know that I, you know, I, I broke his heart. Um, and, um, it took, it took time. It took a lot of time for him to, to see that I was still his daughter. Um, the, the sad part of it really is that I, my father got sick soon after I came mm -hmm. out. So for, for me, there was the lot, the guilt and all that and Italian. So it was guilt upon guilt upon guilt and <laughs> Catholic for me about it. So we did get to a place though, because he, I think because he was ill, that he came to a point place in his mind that he realized, you know, 
my daughter may be gay, but it could be a lot worse. You know, she could she could be sick with you know a terminal. So it, towards at the end, I know that we we got to a good place, and I know that my father was the one individual on the earth that loved me more than anyone, and he was my cheerleader. I think the one regret I had is I'm, when I met Amy, I was we took time to kind of branch out and. And I, I didn't get a chance to come out as quickly. Mm. Um, I was so scared. I wish I could have had a little bit more courage at the beginning because I really w- wish I could have introduced Amy to my father before he got so sick. Mm. He, he did meet Amy and he, and he loved Amy. He was very sweet with Amy. My mom, uh, who is still with us, um, she was tough too, but she came around a lot quicker than my father and mm-hmm. she's, she's 81 so she's got her you know cultural b- blocks but you know she she loves amy she loves amy's kids so we're, we've come a long way but that the family part was really hard mm-hmm. and you know we we i could go on for hours about my extended family <laughs> but i won't <laughs> that, that can't be part two and part three like the godfather you know what i'm saying so yeah Next time we'll do it with wine. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> I almost grabbed a glass of wine just to do I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Like, we're just sitting here chatting. So we yeah. <laughs> might have to take you up on that. Next and we don't have kids this weekend. So I was like, are we are pretty much in like in weekend mode? And yeah, ready yeah. to relax. So, but um, yeah, yeah, family. And I think that that's something that everybody's really afraid of, you know, and I came from a Catholic like conservative upbringing and that was terrifying you know and and my mom was really the only family member I told and then she told everybody else I don't really care I was like whatever I said you can tell people if you want I don't care um yeah yeah, because you know that's the part that kind of also is hard too is like the all the the number of coming out. Yeah, you think you're gonna? Oh, I'm gonna come out. I'm just gonna yeah. say it this one time. And but every, then you have to tell yeah. you know coworkers. We, we call this our coming out tour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, every person Diana that you Ross. know. Diana Ross's song was always piped in my head. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah for real. It, and then you know I always joke with my daughter because. Um, you know, when she started high school or whenever she meets a new group of friends, when she becomes friendly with them, I'm like, so did you, did you come out? Did you tell them that your mom's gay? <laughs> and she's a great sport. She just laughs. She's like, yeah, mom, I told him it's no big deal. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. And I, my, like my son just is so both, but oh yeah, my mom. Like her wife or like my other mom, like he's just very like nonchalant about all of it. So yeah, that, that's awesome. It sounds like Jack, Jack, when he was little, he, he, he told my brother once, my brother's like, so you listen, do you listen to your mom? He's like, I have three moms. <laughs> <laughs> his dad is remarried too. He's got so many moms. <laughs> my brother laughed. He's like, poor kid. He's got three moms. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> oh that's cute that's cute um so how are like your guys' relationships with your ex-husbands and family dynamic and all of that pretty good pretty good yeah Yeah, it it's good now it took some time to all of these 10 years to get to the point that we are at now so i feel like we're cordial friendly with one another at this point things are good so that's good yeah it was it was rough for a while but yeah i i think we have a good mutual respect i i wouldn't have i honestly you know looking back um i don't want to give my ex-husband too much credit <laughs> uh, but um i really wouldn't have i wouldn't have probably come out or it would it could have been a lot worse i should say uh, had he not been the character person that he that he is, mm-hmm. so that was nice. And you know, as as you, anytime you go through divorce, what, no matter what the reason is, divorce is just just sucks, yeah. right? Yeah. You're coming, oh, that was my pillowcase, and that was my <laughs> sofa bed, or whatever. It's like I don't, you know, I I love with the treadmill 
and all the clothes on my back. And like, you yeah. can have everything else. I, I, I have bigger fish to fry here. I'm yeah. coming out. Mm-hmm. Part of that guilt too. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, hey, yeah, yeah. I ruined your life. Take I've everything. I've had a lot of women <laughs> go yeah. through that where they're like, I just want to, but then it's like, no, but you are actually entitled to some things. This doesn't mean yeah. that just because you go through this, you yeah. just have to yeah. like give everything up. You know, it's, it's so hard, we you know. That yeah, we time. didn't know. We were just no. like, yeah. so guilt ridden. We were like, like yeah, take, take it all. Yeah. I'm a lawyer. I should know better. But you know we're making up for it now. Um, but no, with but we are we are very, we are very cordial. We're very civil. I love him. I mean he's yeah. he he's you know my kids have fifty percent of his DNA. I mean mm-hmm. he's a great father, and and so is Amy's ex husband. They're great guys, you know. And so you know what did what did Hillary say? It takes a village. You know we're no with with teenagers. Yeah. It does take the village. I mean, we're yeah. leaning on them now with, oh my gosh, you know, practices and hormones and <laughs> you, you have to huddle up and, and you're like, you know, what are we going to do about this? And you yeah. still, you still in a way, I, we, we are a family unit. I mean, in, you know, when I, when I'm, I'm going through now, my daughter's about to go to college and I can't, I can, t- I can't tell you the number of times I, you know, I've, when I see her dad, or I'll text him. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I mean, do you remember five minutes ago when she was three and, you know, we, we, you know, we have that bond because we have our kids. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we, we are very lucky. That's good. Yeah. 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 And I think we have like an amazing relationship with my ex-husband, my wife, unfortunately, not so much, not for her wishes, but it's just not capable for them to get to get yeah. along super well right now but you know maybe one day it's always that hope maybe day. one day yeah, yeah. It, it can happen. i yeah. mean and there were days when you know you you just had this brush of of <laughs> hate it's like oh i should have taken more than my treadmill or <laughs> but you know it, i think that's more with you know them sometimes just being very male yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> you know, I was like, dude, you don't have to mansplain this to me. I, I got <laughs> yeah, that, that sort of that those those sorts of annoyances will probably all yeah, <laughs> yeah, straight or not, yeah. straight or not, yeah. <laughs> so I, I was gonna ask this too. You were kind of talk about your families and acceptance, all that. How long do you feel like it actually took, like your family, to kind of more so come around? You said they did in time, but how long do you feel like that probably did take? For, uh, for me, uh, I would say um, we got married in, in 2018. Um, I would say if I'm being real honest with about my parents, I would say four to five years for my parents. Okay. Uh, my siblings, um, much shorter. I mean, pretty much they were there from, from the beginning. Uh, my extended family, um, you know, some of them, some, I don't know, some of them may not be there mm-hmm. yet. You know, you, you, yeah. you know, you don't, I don't, you don't need those people in your life. And yeah, yeah. You, you get to a point where you just, it's like, you can accept me or not, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's not my problem. And right. that's a huge thing I tell people. I'm just like, do you really want, I mean, it, it, the people when, when parents don't accept, that's hard, you know, cause you always think like, like this is the person and the people that should love me no matter what, and, you know, and when they question things and when they struggle accepting you, like that's really, really hard. But I always mm-hmm. tell people, I'm like, you know, do you really want to keep people in your life that you have to put on, you know, a, a fake face and be somebody that you really aren't like, that's not, yeah. you know living a whole life you know and you want people to like you for somebody that you're not really like that's yeah Yeah. you do you finally hit that point where you're just like "Mm, this is me take it or leave it takes time but exactly yeah Yeah. I would we would always say you know and Amy would always remind me because I I had more of a that extended family that was not as with it um it's that's on them it's not it's not me Mm -hmm. I, I love them still um in that if they don't or they yeah. they find this to be icky mm-hmm. them, yeah. that's that's their yeah. stuff to figure right. out right that's not because yeah. this it's is not very- your burden to bear it's not yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's really good to know about your parents though because 
I often tell people a lot of times it takes time, you know, like it, it, cause it's a huge change, you know? And I always say, think of how long it took you to make this realization, to come out, to own this, to embrace this. Like how many years did it take you? And I said, so while we always think and expect everyone to just be like, oh yeah, great. Sometimes it takes time for them to wrap their mind around this too. Like I've known you as one way and now I'm knowing you a different way. And what does this mean? And how is this dynamic? And even when there's husbands and there's kids and, but I've known your spouse for however many mm-hmm. years. And now all of a sudden they're just not going to be around. It's, yeah. it's a big change. And so I said, sometimes people need that time to really process everything that's happening too you know and and again it's it's almost like that's not your burden to bear it's theirs it's theirs to get through it it's theirs to work through but it does sometimes just take time so true so incredibly true amy amy actually said that to me when i when i first came out to my dad i came out to my father i went to the house to come out and i leave the house and i call her and she says how did it go and and i said well i came out and now I'm straight again. <laughs> she came out and she went back in. So, because my father just couldn't wrap his brain around. I was like, no way. Yeah. You, this, you, this is not happening. So I always joke, I came out to my father about six or seven times. Mm-hmm. And at some point, it's like you have to do, from him, I, he needed to do, he needed to question it. But how is it this possible? You, when you were in high school and you had that one boyfriend and mm-hmm. what about the love new kids on the block and it's like you know <laughs> how yeah. it, so they had to he had to kind of go through that and amy would be like listen it took you forever you just you know give him time give him time and well and we go through that too i would think those things too but like i had crushes on boys i thought i had crushes on boys like but again it's like you you sort of like dissect all of this on your own too and like make sense of it and right. so much of it was which is hard to explain i feel in so many ways you just did what was normal. Like all the other yes. girls acted this yeah. way. So you acted this way too, because that's what so you were supposed to do. And I think this one's huge too, is, you know, you you guys are both very like feminine presenting women as well. And I mm-hmm. feel like as our upbringing, we did not see feminine presenting lesbians. Like you no, saw God. very mass, like any lesbian that you knew of or saw, it was much more masculine and, you know, and so you were just like, well, that's not me. Like, so right. how could, yeah. how could I be that? Because that's not me either. And so I think that, and so you did, you, you continued to almost like play the role and go through the motions and play the part. And mm-hmm. for a lot of people, that's difficult to understand. And Absolutely. how could you, how could you have done all of these things when this is what was going on? It's like, because that's what I was supposed to do. It's the role yeah. I was supposed to play. It's what everyone else was doing. I was a kid. How did I know better? Yeah. Right. yeah. It's like right. you're you're a kid. You're growing up. You you see your friends doing all this stuff. It's like, well, I guess that's what I'm supposed to be doing too. Yeah. And like you get older and you look back and there's all these like nuggets that were like, yeah, you know, signs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I totally did have a crush on her when I was yep. 13 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I was in kindergarten and I remember looking at some eighth grader at church that I was like, I had a crush on her. All of a sudden it makes sense <laughs> yeah. now. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Totally. I would like idolize her and look at her and just like hope that she would be at church all the time. I'm like, crush. Just so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And um, I, you know, I, think, I think too, you know, when you were saying as feminine presenting women, I think that also uh, was probably another reason why it took a little bit longer because I didn't see myself in, in yeah. that. Yeah. Um, you know, the first time that I, that I actually saw feminine presenting lesbians was Oprah on the Oprah show. Mm. Um, in the, I think it was the nineties or and I'm like, and I remember I was doing something in my room and I'm like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's interesting. Like they are gorgeous. Uh huh. You know, very beautiful women, and that and that kind of left a, a little bit of a mark on my brain. And um, for sure, that that's something I thought about as I, you know, continued to progress. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, but it, it was it was difficult. It's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm, I don't look like that. I look mm-hmm. like this. I think I should just kind of stick. Yeah, stay stick away. where I belong with this. Yeah. Like, yeah, but yeah. Uh-huh. Because I like pedicures and fancy clothes. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) And I don't know. 
so I'm not totally sure what how old you guys are, but it, when I grew up, when my hmm? we're younger than you think. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but so when my wife and I grew up. We also grew up at the time where like girls were making out with other girls, like in the bars and in college and different things like that. And so this was something else we experienced where, again, it was like became this normal societal thing where it's like, oh, you just like go to the bars and have some drinks and like kiss your friend. And like, Mm -hmm. that's what the girls are doing. And so here's my wife and I having those experiences going, oh, my God, this is great. (laughs) But And then you start to talk to other people, like you said, and other girls are like, oh, no, like, I don't care. I'm just doing it for attention and stuff. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm like hoping this happens like, like, when I go out. <laughs> so. Yeah. So that's kind of where our experience is. That's Amy. Amy, I think, was more like where you and I have mm-hmm. with my limited experience. I don't know how I would have reacted, to be honest, mm-hmm. because she tells me about, oh, yeah, you're not in college, this and this. And I say to her, my God, if. If, if I had experienced that then, there's no way it would have taken me that long. There, there's no way. There, yeah. I would have, I don't think yeah. I would have met you. I don't know. The, <laughs> That's the, so funny. The, I, don't, I don't know if it's, so it's good that I was isolated. Otherwise, we wouldn't have never met. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The denial was real. It's like, oh, I'm sure. doing it, Like I said, I mean, yeah. It was, it was huge. And then it was just, oh, yeah, this is just normal. Oh, I just had some drinks. And so like, I'm sitting here thinking in my head, like, this is great. This is awesome. But it would always have an excuse. Oh, no, it's just for fun. Oh, it was just like inhibitions lowered, um, you know, no big deal. And yeah, because I think it was still a lot of denial. Like, this doesn't actually mean that I'm right. Yeah. And I think because I was actually with my husband during all of this, too. We met really young. And so I think then that became more of a, well, then I guess maybe I'm just bi because I'm like, I'm with my husband and, you know, we have that, but like, sure, this is kind of fun, but, you know, it still doesn't mean that I'm a lesbian, you know, and it it really took, and I think my wife went through the same thing because that, that was like her experience and she very much so was just like, oh no, like this is just for fun and had that sort of inner denial for a long time too of what that actually meant. So, yeah. 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 What is the term you used to use? Um, no, so- we don't need to talk okay. about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the part yeah, two. That's for when we're not recording. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. That sounds great. No, well, so I'm going to try to keep this around an hour, but um, I love everything you guys shared. It's been so helpful. Last question, really, what advice would you give other people who are going through this? I mean, I, Amy, you, or Lisa, you kind of shared that, um, like if you were able to go back and talk to your younger self, but any other things that you would share, advise or recommend for people who are really stuck, like in this realization stage and like, where do I go from here? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's tough. Because what I want to say is like, just go for it. <laughs> like. Mm-hmm. I know it's so scary, but it gets so much better once you get Mm -hmm. through it. Like Mm -hmm. it really does get so much better on the other side. And sometimes Mm -hmm. it feels like you will never get there and it's just going to be chaos all the time. But like eventually it does settle and it's so good. Yeah. (laughs) It's so good to just be like living the way that you know you are supposed to. Mm -hmm. But I know that just saying, well, just do it is <laughs> so much easier said done. than done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I would, I would add, you know, I think I would tell people, to, you know, be good, to, be kind to yourself because it, it's going to take a little time. It, you know, Rome wasn't made in a day. And right. this, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. I, I, we talk about this all the time. There's a, there's a, there's a, almost a, a balance and it's, it's, it's the desire to be truly authentic eventually outweighs the comfort of the closet. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, the comfort of the closet is so good. And you notice though, that as you begin to, when you find your person, especially as you begin to go out in the world and love and you truthfully, authentically, and you feel like a whole person because you can love in the, in the natural way you're mm-hmm. supposed to love your desire to stay in that closet 
becomes less and yeah. you just want to push the door down and it, it is organic. It, it mm -hmm. everybody has their own timeline. I can't tell someone hurry up. Yeah. You know, it, it's really hard, especially if they're with someone who who's a little bit more reticent. Amy was with, with someone like me who had a hundred little Italian people, you know, watching my every move and me being very much comfortable in the beginning, in the closet. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I needed to take that time. And, and eventually it just comes to a point where, you know, I, I wanted to be open and mm -hmm. I wanted to love this person because when I'm with her, she brings out the best in me. And, and I only have one shot at this life. Yeah. So the best of me needs to happen now. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. I completely agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we have that picture yeah, in our house. <laughs> that painting. That? Yeah, you have good taste. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. that in like Ross on a clearance rack, like <laughs> way back. And yeah. I love this. I was like, I think it's so pretty. So I think we yeah. got it at the Target. Yeah, Kirkland's one of those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It could have been, yeah, could have been cycled through and ended up there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this was like one of the things I bought to decorate my bedroom when I got divorced and bought my own place. I, it was like above my bed. So yeah, I was like, I love this painting and it's coming with me. So <laughs> yeah, I, I do actually them. have one other question. So you talked about being out and like showing your love. Have you guys had any issues with anybody? That's always a, a huge yeah. question I get asked. Like, I'm so afraid to be myself out in public or to show my significant other affection. Like, has there ever been any situations you've been in where it's been an issue? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not uh, strangely, not here, here. in yeah. Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> so my wife and I haven't either, like at all, because, you know, you would think that you would get some of yeah. that, but no, not at all. So, no, but in my, we were in Miami when we had been really. Yeah, you which would is, think yeah. which you would think wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We went to an, a a restaurant and they had some sort of like a community table. So for people who were walk, you know, walk ins and they'd sit the people down mm -hmm. and we sat. So we were sitting with a with other a bunch people. of strangers basically. Okay. <laughs> and I, it was uh, I had I think it was Amy's birthday we were celebrating, and I had bought her a gift, and I gave her the earrings, and it was still very early on, so we're both. Uh, I was being careful, but here I am, you know. I we're outside of our city, so yeah. you kind of feel a little bit more like you can be more comfortable, and so I gave her a kiss. There was a family, not like a full on no, make out no, kiss. No, no, it was. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Oh uh, just you know she thanked thanked me for the earrings and there was this ma mother father and a teenage daughter they were visiting from spain and they were sitting kind of next to us um they complained to mm -hmm. to the waiter that we were i don't know they were complained okay and the waiter and, and this is we were three quarters of the way through our dinner we were at dessert the waiter came over and offered to move us to a different table. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, we're almost done. Why do you want to move us? And he said, well, the table next to you, or the folks next to you are complaining that you're being too, uh, you're, you're, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that we had felt that sort of open and accepted discrimination. Like, mm -hmm. it's okay. So I, I thought it's okay for you to move me, but why yeah. don't you have them move? Yeah. <laughs> Instead, he he asked us to move. Mm -hmm. Well, we refused to move. We paid the check and we left. And we left a very very uh, negative review. Mm -hmm. on the and the owner called us very um, apologetic the next day and offered to buy us dinner. I said, you know, thank you, but we don't live here, so. Uh, buying dinner is is really not going to make this right. I told them, you know, if you want to make it right, don't treat people like that. I mean, we mm -hmm. were just we were just having dinner and we love each other and you it's Miami. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And so, uh, I told them next time if this happens again, if someone wants another table to move because they're being affectionate 
and they're same sex, you should move the other table. Mm -hmm. Or just be like, sorry, no. it's a it's a free country, basically. <laughs> like, if you're bothered, you can leave. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. 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 That was wow. the first thing. Yeah. I don't I mean, knock on all the wood. I don't we yeah, haven't it's, had much. No. That that one was memorable though. But yeah. otherwise it's yeah. been it's been fine. We get asked at the grocery store for sisters and stuff yeah. all the time because <laughs> people can't so figure out. Do you get that? Are you guys we sick? haven't gotten sister. We haven't really gotten that, but occasionally somebody, some people, have been asked like, "Oh, like, how do you know each other?" You know, like, like it's like you can see the intrigue of like, yeah. like someone because explain we, this to me. Yeah, because yeah. they can feel that connection between the two of you and mm -hmm. with us. Oh, you guys are twins. I'm yeah, like. I we get I, twins a lot, sisters like, all the time. She's pale, <laughs> pale white. I'm Sicilian. I got Latin. I got you know olive yeah. skin. I'm like, I don't get it. Yeah, she's got green eyes. I got no, you know, not, yeah. nothing coloring. Um, so That's I just like well, the worst was when, yeah, yeah, we were. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to go another conversation we'll talk about yeah. more chats yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well no this is awesome like thank you guys so much for doing this and it's been great to yeah. to talk to you and hear your story and yeah but everything yeah. you've shared I know will be so helpful to the women I, I wish, I wish so. that this was around when we were going yes. through it oh my god I wish that something like this existed I wish that all the time when I was going through mm -hmm. it I, I've had a lot of people say yeah. that like the people that have made it through have come and yeah. have even chimed in and been like oh that's so great that you're doing this because you know it's so, I wish I would have had something like this so yeah. it was like way out of my comfort zone to like do this but Aww. I Going, but you can't tell because she did an amazing job. You did a great job. I never would have known. Yeah, when I was going through it ten years ago, I remember saying like, if there's anything I can do in the future to help anybody who is in this position, I will do it. So yeah, that's awesome. So I really appreciate you doing it, and it will make a difference. Wow, Thank you. it was great to meet yeah, you. Yeah, it was really good to meet yeah, you. Yeah, you talk to your wife someday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We uh, have some friends who actually um would love to know what the name of your youtube channel is because they want to make sure and catch i know this. what it is oh you do yeah okay. and i mean right. i can send you the link once this is uploaded on there uh um, okay yeah and you guys can share it or do whatever but yeah yeah do you have you connected with any other like late lesbian couples in the area yes uh we have one friend my friend one a friend of mine actually we we went she came out six months before i came out okay and same situation. Yeah, she was their kids to went to school together. So. Okay. So now we, her son went to school. My son. That's when I knew that was a good sign. Like this was okay. Yeah. This, right. Because she came out. She was in the same school. It was a Catholic school. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, she, she also was like us, and uh, she's remarried um, to a lovely woman. They just got married last year in Hawaii. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. We have with all of this too. I've act, well, randomly, randomly. So I don't know. This is a thing too. You know, they say gaydar is a thing. I feel like I have like late life lesbian gaydar. And I like, we have run into a couple couples out in public where I'm like, I feel like they might be like us. And then we started talking and they are. So yeah. Um, yeah. And so That's we've made a couple friends that way too, but I know it's a bit more common. I think one lives, well, one lives in Wentzville, one lives right here in Lake St. Louis, like with us too. So, um, yeah, it's so much more common than people realize. I think that's another big yeah. thing. Yeah. Everyone feels so alone. We're everywhere. Yeah. But <laughs> we're we are, everywhere. we're everywhere. But it's yeah. And it's true. I'm like, I'm telling you, like the more that you start to like talk about it here, the more people come out of the woodwork and are like, Oh, mm -hmm. or even I know so-and-so, or I work with somebody or my friend, it, like more people seem to know of these types of situations. But when you're going through it again, it feels like you're the only one. So, so true. So true. Exactly. Well, yeah. we're, we're grateful to have joined you on this and yeah. hopefully uh, we can help someone who's going through a similar situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Thank you, ladies. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Good to talk to you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye.